Proverbs 7 verses 1 to 27, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and leith in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home, he has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech she caused him to yield, with the flattering of her lips she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Opening Sentence Proverbs 7 verse 1 My son, keep my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. This is the fifteenth and final time my son is used in section one of Proverbs concerning the instructions of the father to his son. It will not be used again until chapter 19. The father continues to urge Israel to keep his words. The phrase lay up is used similarly in the book of Job and in the gospel of Matthew. Job 22 verse 22 receive, I pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. Matthew 6 verse 20 But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Keep the law. Two pathways are continuously set before Israel. One pathway leads to life and the other to death. Proverbs 7 verse 2 Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. The phrase apple of thine eye first appears in the Song of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 32, which was given to Israel just before entering the promised land. This song is important for Israel's future when they will sing it during the seven-year tribulation. Revelation 15 verse 3. The apple of God's eye is a reference to the nation of Israel found throughout the Bible. Consequently, God's law should have been the apple of Israel's eye. The use of this figure of speech causes some to believe that the tree of knowledge of good and evil may have been an apple tree, presented as a counterfeit of the tree of life. Write the law on your heart. Proverbs 7 verse 3 Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. The law of Moses gave similar instructions. Deuteronomy 11 verse 18 Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Wisdom thy sister. In the following verses, wisdom and understanding are referred to as my sister and thy kinswoman. Wisdom's role has changed from mother in Proverbs chapters 1 and 6, to wife in chapter 5, and now to sister and kinswoman in chapter 7. These figurative wise women will keep Israel safe from the strange woman in the same way that a literal wife or sister can keep her husband or brother safe from strange women. 
If Israel will keep God's word, God's word will keep Israel. Proverbs 7 verses 4 to 5 say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Finding the theme, choose the kinswoman or the harlot. Israel has been thoroughly warned about the strange woman in Proverbs chapters 2, 5, and 6. Her primary method of seduction is flattery. In the following passage, the son chooses the way to the strange woman's house, and the end result is death. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman, with the attire of an harlot, and subtle of heart. Proverbs 7,6-10 This account of a harlot and her method of seducing a young, ignorant man is a picture of the nation of Israel being seduced by the doctrine of unbelieving Israel. The harlot entices them to worship false gods instead of the true God. The young man's first mistake was to go near her house. Proverbs 2 verse 18 and 5 colon 8 already warned the son about the house of the strange woman. Her house is the counterfeit to God's holy temple, and undoubtedly it is a place of worship. The street near her corner is significant. Second Chronicles 28 verse 24 and King Ah has gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. Ezekiel 16 verse 24 That thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. The unfaithful kings of Israel led the nation to worship false gods on every corner of every street in the city of Jerusalem. The darkness is ever increasing the nearer he gets to her house, twilight, evening, and black and dark night. This is referring to much more than physical darkness. It is a reference to spiritual darkness, Genesis 1 verse 2, Isaiah 60 verse 2, Jeremiah 13 verse 16, as the writer had no trouble seeing what transpired. The seductress has on the attire of a harlot. Many wrongly assume that she is dressed in a revealing manner. This false notion is contrary to scripture. The attire of a harlot is described in Genesis 38 verses 1 to 15 as a full-body covering which concealed the identity of the woman who wore it. This is consistent with the nature of the occult and the purpose of a counterfeit. To occult means to hide or to cut off from view. Proverbs 7 verses 11 to 12 She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house, now is she without, now in the streets, and leith in wait at every corner. One harlot cannot possibly wait in the streets, plural, and at every corner of the city. This is a reference to the multitude of Israel's idolatries committed on the high places, first built by King Solomon. The harlot is seen sitting out in a public space, which also contributes to her identity. Contrary to the Apostle Peter's description of a wife with a meek and quiet spirit, and Apostle Paul's description of a wife as a keeper at home, the strange woman was once under the guidance and covenant of God but she abandoned her first estate. This identifies the strange woman as unbelieving Israel who only pretends to worship God while being used by Satan to seduce the children of Israel away from God. Proverbs 7 verses 13 to 14 So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me, this day have I paid my vows. Catching and kissing him is significant. Remember, she is a huntress of precious souls. Proverbs 6 verses 5 and 26. 1 Kings 19 verse 18 Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Hosea 13 verse 2 And now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver, and idols according to their own understanding, all of it the work of the craftsmen, they say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Satan is subtle. He wants to be worshipped as God, 
so he disguises himself as the counterfeit of the true God. The harlot even pays her vows and offers peace offerings as required by the law of Moses. Proverbs 7 verse 15 therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. She appears to be seeker-friendly, while she is hunting for souls to devour. The harlot's bed. Proverbs 7 verses 16 to 18 I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Her house and her bed are in the groves on the eminent places where idol worship was conducted. Isaiah 57 verse 7 Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed, even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. Isaiah 57 verse 9 And thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Revelation 2 verse 22 Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. The good man is away. Proverbs 7 verses 19 to 20 For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. A time frame is given when this seduction takes place. It happens when the good man is away. In the Old Testament, God appointed a good man over his house, which was the high priest. When Jesus came to Israel the first time, he became the faithful high priest of the nation. Hebrews 2 verse 17. Currently, the good man is away on a long journey, just as Jesus prophesied in the mysteries of the kingdom parables. Mark 13 verse 11 34. During the seven year tribulation and before Jesus returns, Israel will be seduced into committing spiritual adultery against God by the great whore of Babylon. Flattery and fair speech. Proverbs 7 verses 21 to 23 With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. With her flattery and fair speech, the harlot successfully seduced the son away from God's word which resulted in his death. Hearken ye children. Proverbs 7 verses 24 to 25 Hearken unto me now therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. This doctrine is not simply about a father teaching his son not to succumb to the seductions of a harlot. God is teaching his children to stay away from the path to the strange woman's house. Conclusion Hell and Death Proverbs 7 verses 26 to 27 For she hath cast down many wounded, yet many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Summary the law of Moses was given to God's wife, his covenant people Israel. By keeping the law, they would enjoy God's blessings and security. Unbelievers seduced the children of Israel to worship other gods. Israel forgot God, turned away from keeping his law, and committed spiritual adultery with the false gods of surrounding nations. God warned Israel repeatedly that disobedience of his covenant would result in their death and destruction. Dispensational Consideration In the current dispensation of grace, the Apostle Paul warned the church about seducing spirits, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. False teachers pose as ministers of righteousness, but they teach a false gospel that is contrary to the gospel of the grace of God. Believers are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, not by works, Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. Romans 4 verse 5, a minister that teaches salvation by works, or that works are required to maintain their salvation, is preaching a false gospel. Satan is the seducing spirit behind this false teaching, just as he was behind the seduction of the nation of Israel. Life Application
Israel was commanded by God to keep the law of Moses, but believers living in the dispensation of grace are not under the law. Romans 6 verse 14 However, no one is without laws unto God. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 21 God wrote 13 epistles to the predominantly Gentile church through the Apostle Paul, which are found in his epistles of Romans through Philemon. Believers would do well to keep those words of God as the apple of their eye. Proverbs 8 verse 1 Doth not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice. And in Proverbs chapter 8, wisdom gives instructions to all who will hear her. Proverbs chapter 7 Homework Read, the only mention of kinswoman is in Proverbs 7 verse 4 and Leviticus 18 verses 12 to 13. A kinswoman is the female sibling, blood relative, of a parent, whereas an aunt is a relationship only by marriage. Concordance search, find the phrase, my sister, my spouse. God instructed Israel to call wisdom thy sister. Wisdom was also portrayed as a wife in Proverbs chapters 5. In chapter 8, wisdom will declare that she was by the Lord and brought up with him like a sister. Abraham and his wife Sarah are an example of this sister-spouse relationship. This might also be said of Adam and Eve, and possibly even Isaac and Rebekah, Genesis 26 verses 6 to 7. The Song of Solomon is about the Lord being joined to his wife, the land of Israel, whom he calls my sister, my spouse, in chapters 4, 9 5, 1. You can find many cross-references in this passage with the first nine chapters of Proverbs. The marriage of Israel is also the topic of Isaiah 62 verse 4. Read the context of 2 Chronicles 28 verse 4. And Ezekiel 16 verse 24 reveals more about the places of worship of false gods in every corner and street of the city of Jerusalem. Concordance search. Find the word vow and the phrase peace offering. In the Law of Moses to better understand what the harlot is sacrificing. See Exodus 32 verse 6. Compare, read Proverbs 7 verse 16 and Ezekiel 27 verse 7 to cross-reference the fine linen of Egypt. Read all of Ezekiel 27 to understand the context. Search for fine linen in a concordance. You will find both positive and negative references. In Revelation 19 verses 7 to 8. God's wife has made herself ready, and she is seen clothed in fine linen, which is defined as the righteousness of saints. The bride, New Jerusalem, is filled with those believers in Israel who endured the fiery trial of faith. Egypt represents the world, so the fine linen that the harlot possesses represents religious works of self-righteousness, much like Adam and Eve's fig leaves and Babylon's royal apparel. Concordance search, use Blue Letter Bible to find the word loves, which is only found three times. Compare and contrast these three references. Psalm 45 is a song of loves. Song of Solomon 7 verse 12 is the genuine loves between the Lord and his wife Israel. And Proverbs 7 verse 18 is a pretense. Read 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 is the Apostle Paul's warning against another Jesus, another spirit and Another Gospel. Read 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 15 to understand that Satan is operating today under the disguise of ministers in the churches.